Hello and welcome back to another episode of this week's watches and this week like every week we have a great variety for you guys and girls from vintage to modern to neo vintage as it's now called with something as old as me from 1997 one month away from when I was actually born which is crazy. Uh, there's some really great stuff on the table today and I think you guys and girls are going to really like it and as I say the range is everything. I mean where else are you going to see this kind of range in one drop um, never mind from one dealer but to be all in one drop on a saturday is kind of incredible so i want to thank all you guys and girls for making this happen and making this a reality um, at the end of the day we're very fortunate because obviously we buy a lot from you uh, from the people watching but also we can sign a lot so as you know um, we either buy or we can sign uh, or obviously we don't take the watch it's one of those sort of three scenarios so when you uh, submit a request to sell your watch we'll be very honest we'll give you the break down and we'll also tell you if you're going to do better selling it on eBay. For example, we get offered a lot of modern affordable watches like Hamilton's and Citizens and things like this and for us to purchase it to make enough margin to make it worth it, um, we have to be very, very low on those kind of things because already the, the price point is so low. Um, so we'll be honest with you and say, you know, you're better off selling it on eBay when they've got their £1 selling fee offer and things like that. So we'll always try and give you the best opportunity to sell your watch. And again, with purchasing certain watches, you know, we may be interested, but our price is going to be a lot lower because it's a watch that's going to take theoretically a lot longer to sell. Therefore, we have to account that in the price. You know, if we have to stock something for six months, we need to make sure we're pricing in because we are locking that capital away for six months, if that makes sense. So therefore we have to be very competitive. Whereas if we can sign, we're not at any capital outlay and we can give you a very, very fair rate. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you do want to sell, head over to the website, fill out the form on the sell section and we'll get back to you as quick as we can. Also, try and put as much information in there as possible because it really helps us and also state what you're ideally looking for. So if you've got a watch like a, a really obscure Grand Seiko and you know that you'd rather consign because you're going to get more for it, state that in there and we'll just get straight to the point with consignment for you. So um, we try and keep it as streamlined and as quick and as easy as possible um, because at the end of the day, that's what we all want, isn't it? Simplicity. So yeah, now we've got that out of the way. Um, I seem to always forget this, but as always, in the description, there is every single watch shown here today listed with a link to the website. So you can go see all the prices, details, and photos and make a purchase. Uh, and there's also a timestamp. So if you're here just to see the AP or just to see the Squale, for example, you can skip straight to that and we keep it as simple as possible. Um, what I'm also going to start doing, and it's something I've not done yet, I'm going to do a YouTube link on the website so it can come straight here as well and it will have a timestamp in the brackets as well um, because sometimes people you know they find a watch that maybe we've had for two months on the website and they can't find it in the videos and i also have to scroll through and try and find it as well um, so that way it's nice and simple and on there so i'm going to look at doing that from here on to make it again a lot easier um, so now that all that's out of the way, let's talk about what's on wrist. I am wearing the gorgeous 1969 Rolex 6694. Now, I've been asked a million times about this watch. A lot of people want to buy it. I've got about four people already who have said, uh, when you want to sell it, let me know. And it's been amazing to see that. And some watches really capture people, um, and this seems to be one of them. I personally love it. I'm hoping it's never going to really leave me. Um, so that's sort of still where we're at with this one. But to sort of counter that, um, I sourced a 1971 6694 without the bracelet. We can always source you a bracelet. It probably won't be period because a riveted bracelet like this or just even a period bracelet. Very expensive, very hard to find and usually in terrible condition. So we'd probably find a later bracelet, like a reference 78350 bracelet, I think it's called. Um, so we could try and source you one of those. But anyway, back to this watch. This is an unpolished example, so we'll be talking about that shortly as well. Uh, and I'll have this to compare as well. I'm sorry for the noise outside if you can hear it. But now that all of that rambling is out the way, let's crack on with what you're here to see, and that's the watches. We're going to start with the incredible Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, which I was wearing in the last episode, um, just on wrist. So let's take a close look at this one. What a watch to begin with this week's episode. I know I say that pretty much every episode, but there really is something quite incredible I, I feel anyway in each episode and this for me is that thing in this episode this is a beautiful Audemars Piguet Royal Oak in 37 millimeters um, which uh, sorry 36 millimeters which some people find too small however I have to say if you haven't tried one on 
do not discredit it yet because some people find the 41 way too big even though they wear for example a 42 uh, mil speedmaster it's all about the case size and the way it wears and also the lug to lug and just overall how it feels on wrist these 36 are perfect so this is the reference 14700 14700 sa from circa 1987 to sort of 93 94 but to be honest i'd put it anywhere between circa 1987 and 1990 and these um these are done or dated via the serial, which is a D serial in this case. And Royal Oaks, they give you a range for the for the letter, basically. Um, and without an extract, obviously, you can find out exactly with an extract which you can get from Audemars Piguet. We've chosen not to in this case, but you can do that. The cost, um, I believe, is about 500 Swiss francs. It could be a bit more, um, so do check. But um, for us... It's a great thing to have, but we didn't really want to fork out that extra cost because, to be honest, it doesn't really add that onto the value. And at the end of the day, we are a business and we do have to keep these things in mind, but we can certainly help you with acquiring that. Um, inside is the automatic Audemars Piguet Caliber 2125, a very renowned movement from Audemars Piguet, which obviously features a date complication. And what you have is a beautiful grey dial, which in some lights it can seem like it's a bit difficult to see, but you know what? It's very legible with the contrasting gold. It works really, really well. In terms of seeing the font and the Audemars Piguet and the wording, yes, it can be a bit tricky because it's actually printed onto the dial itself, as opposed to the modern ones where the dial is basically cut out um, with a with the gap basically that hasn't got the the same finish um, so it's a lot more easy to see um, we've kept the condition as it was presented to us to give you the option of having it refinished if you want and we can get that done for you we can have it coming back looking absolutely fantastic however you know for me i kind of like the way it looks with a bit of wear i like that that sort of patina and the age um that comes with the watch from you know 1987 onwards i think it's to be expected um and i kind of like it it won't be for everyone but we can always do that after the fact whereas we can't go back in time and obviously remove a polish um so we'd always rather keep it in this condition Screw down crown as well, as you can see, signed original crown, nice solid 18 karat gold bezel and 18 karat gold through the links with a open clasp, which works via this. This is a, a lever, basically. So you pull it down and it opens. You can see how that works. Really, really lovely example. Great condition and just a great piece. Um, it does have spare links as well. That's something to note. So let's show this on wrist and toward dimension. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. As I was saying, do not discredit the 36 mil before you have tried it on. For me, I actually think this is the ideal size for the Royal Oak. If anything, I'd even go a bit smaller. I have tried on the 33 mils and I actually think they're fine. Yes, they are on the smaller side and would be considered a ladies watch. But I really don't mind how that looks, to be honest. So this is 36 mil by 46 mil lug to lug, only 7.5 mil thick and 23 mil at the lugs tapering right down to the clasp. And it gives it an overall fantastic look, which is no surprise for the Royal Oak. So go check out this beautiful watch on the website today. From there to a watch, if I was in a different financial position, it would be staying with me. Um, and that is a really gorgeous 1997 Rolex Submariner, no date, 14060. An incredible example with paperwork as well. So let's take a closer look. So next up is this incredible Rolex Submariner. This is the 14060 from July 1997. And as I said in the intro, it comes with its original paperwork and a spare link as well for the bracelet, just like the um, the Royal Oak we just looked at. We have decided to keep the condition exactly as presented to us. The case is nice and strong. You still have the chamfers and lines, um, and we can have it polished up for you, make, looking at, making it look just as good as it probably did when it left the factory. Not quite like perfect, but it will be it will be really, really good. So we can do that if you'd like. Um, but for me, again, personally, um, speaking personally here, I like it with the wear. I think a Submariner should have wear. It should have marks. It should have age. And I kind of like that. That's why I'd always go for a pre-ceramic uh, five digit or even a four digit if I could over the modern ceramic versions. That's just me personally. So beating away inside here is the automatic Rolex Caliber 3000. Um, really reliable, well-used movement. And you can see you've got the original bracelet, hollow end links and folded clasp as well. You do have the dive extension there as well, which you can pull out. And obviously it all clips down as you'd expect. And as I say, one spare link is currently fitted to my seven inch wrist or thereabouts. 
with one spare link. Now, something to make note of, there is a couple of marks on the bezel. As you can see, you can probably see them in the photos as well. And there is a slight mark on the dial above the word Submariner to the right side, sort of above the E. I don't know if you can see it in the photos or in the video right now, but something to just make a note of. Again, for me, it doesn't really change anything about the watch. You know, it's it's a 25 year old watch. It probably should have some age and wear and, and different bits, but we wanna make sure you're well aware of it um, before obviously buying, because there's nothing worse than getting a watch and it's not as described or um, someone's just overlooked something completely. And again, it can happen. We, we all, we're all human at the end of the day and we're looking at these things with our eyes and loops, um, but where we notice these things, we'll always make sure we point them out and make a note of them for you as well. Um, so let's show this one on wrist and taut dimensions. And here you go, fitted to my seven inch wrist, as you can see, super comfortable, very good looking, and it just, it works. There's a reason the Submariner is so popular, always has been and probably always will be. It's a versatile and well-rounded watch. So what you're looking at here is 40 mil by 47 mil look to look, 13 mil thick and 20 mil on the lugs. There are many aftermarket options for straps for this watch if you wanna go down that route, but for me, I'd be keeping it on the bracelet, a great all-rounder and one you really can't go wrong with. So go check it out on the website today. Sticking to Rolex, the one I rambled a bit about at the beginning of this video and one I'm clearly excited for, that is this 1971 6694, which is just fantastic. So let's take a closer look. Next up is a incredible Rolex Oyster Date Precision 6694 from circa 1971 in fantastic condition. You can see you've got the beautiful silver dial, uh, which is obviously tritium and tritium handset to match. Date over there at three o'clock with the Cyclops over the crystal. And one really notable thing about this watch is the case. The case is in fantastic, uh, fantastically sharp condition. I would probably say polished once in its life, to be honest. I wouldn't go as far as to definitely claim for certain unpolished, but it's damn near close. And if we have a look compared to my, my 6694, you can see the difference in the looks there. Now again, having this one just on its own, that, that sort of lug is still a very good lug. It's not bad at all. You know, I'm perfectly happy with that. And I think most people would be, especially for a watch of this age. However, when compared against this one, you can see just how great a near unpolished lug can look. And that chamfer as well, really beautiful. So that's something to make note of. This is a very nice condition example in very, very good overall condition. As I say, no bracelet, but if you want a bracelet sourced, we can source you one. Um, sourcing period correct is going to be incredibly difficult. So um, please don't bear me with that task, but sourcing a bracelet that will fit a genuine Rolex 19 mil, we can do so um, relatively easy. So just let me know if you'd like that sourced. Obviously it will come an additional charge, but this watch looks fantastic on a strap anyway. And just to make it very universal, we paired it on a black leather, but there are plenty of options this looks good on, you know, whether it be suede, which is obviously no surprise to most of you for me or whatever you choose to do as we flip it over a nice screw down case back inside a manually wound rolex caliber 1225 and um yeah just a beautiful example overall one you really cannot go wrong with and all under a price point of three thousand pounds for a rolex which i find incredible so let's show it on wrist and tour dimensions and here we go on my seven inch wrist there's a reason i absolutely love this case size it is 35 mil a lot of places will either say 35 or 34 but measure Measuring it, it is truly 35 mil, it is not 34. So 35 mil um, on the case size by 41.5 mil look to look only 10 mil thick and that is including that quite domed acrylic crystal, um, which is quite impressive. And what you're looking at is uh, 19 mil on the lug. So yes, a little bit awkward, but there are options out there, so don't panic. And as I say, if you want a bracelet sourcing, let us know, we'll do our best to source you a bracelet as well. So go check this one out on the website today. Now onto a Grand Seiko you really do not see often, and this is an incredible Grand Seiko quartz diver with the white and the black, beautiful contrast, and a very interesting watch. And when you see the price, it is definitely up there, but when you consider the scarcity of this model, it really all makes sense. And again, this is for that diehard collector who's looking for this exact one. This probably isn't one you're gonna stumble on the website, see and go, I'll purchase that one. If you're after this, this is the one you're gonna buy, right? So let's take a closer look at this one. Next up is the fantastic Grand Seiko quartz. Um, which is the SBGX 115 featuring the 9F61 quartz caliber behind this case back as we crack it open or open the clasp even for you to see. Um, yeah, a very, very good Grand Seiko quartz. At the end of the day, these quartz are renowned for their technology, um, their, their ability to be incredibly accurate, long lasting and just done to a far superior standard to almost any quartz out there. Now, yes, there are some exemptions, um, especially when it comes to finishing and things like that. But when it comes 
comes to actual ex execution and quality and craftsmanship, Grand Seiko really are at the top of their game when it comes to this, so you are buying with absolute confidence. This model's from April 2017 with its box and papers and spare links, and is in worn but very fair condition. You will see some scratches here and there, some signs of wear as to be expected, but again, nothing drastic at all. And you have a very good Grand Seiko clasp with a beautiful buckle, and you have the dive extension here as well, which ratchets out. So as you push the clasp back, you can then release the lever basically and you can ratchet it in as far as you want to go or push it out and so on and so on so you can get that fit that you require. Now this can be used just for on the fly adjustments, you know, just getting that little bit extra if you haven't got access to a pin to move out here, uh, you do have that option as well. So a very, very good looking watch. And again, one that is for the, the collector who's specifically looking for this. I'd be very surprised if the person picking this up is just randomly scrolling through and, and chooses this. Uh, I'm sure it could happen. But I think for the most part, this is gonna go to a collector who's been looking for this reference because it just comes up so rarely and that's sort of the, the amazing thing Thing about having one in. So let's show on wrist and torque dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. It is on the larger side when it comes to divers, but it's still very comfortable. And as always, Grand Seiko know how to make a bigger watch fit the wrist comfortably. And this is no exception. So what you're looking at is 43 mil by 48.5 mil lug to lug, 12.5 mil thick and 22 mil on the lugs with drilled lug holes to make strap changing a breeze. So go check out this watch on the website today. From there over to an Oris Pro Pilot uh, X or 10. The first one we've had with the five day movement in titanium, an incredible watch and a really, really interesting design. And I think Oris, as always, you know, I've always been a big fan of them, but I think they're really pushing their design language to, to the extremes and seeing what they can produce. And this watch is one of them and I think they've done very well with it. So let's take a closer look. Next up is the Oris Pro Pilot X five day movement with the new Oris or not so new anymore, but still relatively new, uh, automatic Oris Caliber 400. This model's from December 2022. It does come with its box and paperwork, and I won't bore you with the reference. You can go see that on the website. But there's the movement, a very beautiful movement, and very, very thin for a five day, which I think is where, well, a lot of this movement is impressive, but that's one of the factors for sure, and I think it's very, very nicely done. Um, another really interesting thing is the clasp on this watch. It's done like a seat belt, um, where you see lift right there, and as you lift it up, it opens up and releases it, and you just clip it back down as normal. Very unnecessary, but a very cool touch nonetheless. And again, sort of ties into the overall theme and design of this watch, which is very futuristic. Is Oris going into a new direction? I think this is a replacement, and I could be wrong, but it feels like a replacement to some of the, like the Arctic series and these other series from Oris, uh, the more sportier line. They've they've sort of introduced this, and it's done beautifully. So as I said, December 2022 with this box and paperwork and spare links included, a very, very good looking watch, great design from Oris, grey dial, black date, and very dark hands as well, which won't be to the liking for some, but I think it really ties in with the overall look. It makes it very monochromatic, which I think is quite cool. Nice large screw down crown as well, and a fixed bezel with sort of like an engine turning almost in design. Very good looking watch. So let's show it on wrist and torque dimension. So here we go on my seven inch wrist, very, very comfortable at only 38 5 mil, but it definitely appears bigger. It feels more like a 40 mil. So 38.5 mil by 47 mil lug to lug, only 11.5 mil thick and 19 mil on the lugs. So again, there are options out there, but to be honest, I think the overall design for this is with the bracelet. Um, let me know what you think in the in the in the comments below. Check it out on the website today. Now on to a surprising favorite for me. This is the Bulgari Diagono Scuba GMT. A very very cool looking watch with a great function. And again, just something you don't see often. And uh, I think it's very underrated for the price. Very, very underrated for the price. So let's take a closer look at this one. Next up, we have the Bulgari Diagono. I apologize if I butcher that pronunciation. I feel like I do every time, but I think it is correct. <laughs> um, the Diagono GMT in a incredible profile and just overall great look. And I think GMTs are often sporty and, and to be fair this is a sports watch but it's done in a slightly different way and i think it looks really unique you have pushers almost like a chronograph um, and these are screw down pushers this one right here is you unscrew it and you can push in this changes the date which is down here at six o'clock as a subdial which again almost gives the illusion of a chronograph and then for the gmt uh, you set it via the crown and then these pushers are to change your local hour hand so one pusher 
progresses it forward as you can see and the other pusher uh, progresses it backwards and that's for changing your local time on the fly when you land somewhere new and you can keep your GMT always set to home time if you wish or you know you can do it however you want um, I think that's a really cool feature and it's nicely done with the pushes to be honest again I like the look of a chronograph with the pushes on the case um, so for me aesthetically this is pleasing and it not being a chronograph as well is kind of unique um, again in my opinion uh, you have a rotating bezel uh, standard click bezel so you can actually set multiple time zones if you wish you can see you have numbers in the bezel inlaid as well behind uh, the the sort of um, normal standardized bezel of 15 30 45 and so on and so on uh, your integrated bracelet standard design um, they are a bit tricky for changing the links so do keep that in mind this does have uh, its spare links as well which is nice and as you open it up you can see a sort of hidden clasp tucked away in there i've often heard these watches referred to as um, bracelets with a watch attached to it and i think it really is that bulgari obviously a jewelry brand doing fantastic watches i think it's really unique to see this kind of design overall now the reference to this one is sd 38 st and inside is an automatic gmt caliber very difficult to determine exactly which one i, I assume it's some sort of eta um, but again, it's very difficult to determine exactly which one. Circa 2000s on this watch. Uh, again, you can't date exactly. There isn't a database for Bulgari, um, but definitely circa 2000s, I'd say mid to late 2000s probably is, is accurate. So let's show this on wrist and taut dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist, a very good looking watch. So there's obviously some wear, some scratches to it. There are some very minute hairline scratches to the crystal, which to be honest, can only really be seen when in direct light and angled in a certain way. Under normal viewing conditions, you cannot tell they're there at all uh, again just wanting to be transparent with you guys and girls so what you're looking at is 37.5 mil by 46.5 mil look to look only 11.5 mil thick and 21.5 mil at this point tapering down to the clasp um, a very good looking watch go check it out on the website today now on to a watch you cannot miss especially when it's on the table here it probably draws your eyes instantly to it just because of the bright blue for for sort of everything else as well and this is the doxa sub 300 aqua aqua marine blue a fantastic looking watch and a really really cool piece so let's take a closer look at this one so next up is this awesome doxa sub 300 aqua marine blue uh, or as some people call it tiffany blue and obviously the, the Tiffany blue hype has gone crazy. Uh, you could probably hear with my sign in the voice. I'm not really that, I don't really care to be honest. It's, it's very overused and very overdone. However, the color is lovely and that's what makes it frustrating because it is a beautiful color. Um, and this one done in the aqua, aqua marine blue is also fantastic. The blue is, is a lot lighter in my opinion than an aqua, aqua marine and it's definitely done to sort of uh, play along with the Tiffany blue hype. Is there anything wrong with that? No, because I know a lot of people really love it and again, I can see why from a visual perspective, it is beautiful and there's no denying that. So I won't bore you with the reference to this one. You can see it on the website. As we flip it over, there is an automatic Salita SW200 hidden behind the usual um, nicely decorated Doxa case back. Obviously you have a screw down crown as well. And this one's from December, 2021 with his box and paperwork. Its spare links are also included for its beads of rice um, Doxa bracelet, which are always super comfortable and super nice on wrist. And again, Doxa, real history, real heritage. And a watch like this really sort of throws all of that in with modern um, design and stuff that we take for we, we sort of um, idolize if you will in today's society of, of design I think it's very interesting that sort of um, would you call it an oxymoron probably not but the sort of extreme contrast let's say of both of those things you have extreme heritage and history and, and sort of um, Oh, what would you call it? Sort of craftsmanship done for a purpose, right? Done for an exact reason, um, which was a tool watch in this case. And then you have something so design focused like the Tiffany blue color incorporated into that. I think it's quite interesting. And I do wonder what we're gonna think of this sort of thing in 10, 15, 20 years. It's gonna be very interesting to see. But let's show this on wrist and talk uh, dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist, the usual uh, Doxa case shape and fit and finish which we come to expect and it is super comfortable on pretty much most size wrists to be fair. What you're looking at is 43 mil by 45.5 mil look to look, so super short on that look to look length, 13 mil thick and 20 mil on the lugs. I'd personally be keeping it on this anyway, but there are options also from Doxa for straps as well. So go check out this one on the website today. Now onto a watch that we have definitely never stocked um, 
and I think it's really, really cool. Um, I, when I when I was offered this, I was intrigued more than anything, and having it in hand, I'm actually quite blown away by the quality of this. It definitely is better than I thought it would be, especially considering the price. And this is a Zero T4, the Archer, um, Turbion, and it's a true Turbion. I had a lot of questions when I posted this, is that a real Turbion? It's a real Turbion. I don't know quite what a non-real Turbion is. Maybe just an open work or just a balanced spinning, but uh, this is a Turbion, <laughs> true and true. So let's take a closer look at this one. So next up, something I was intrigued to get in and something that I was not very hopeful for at all, to be honest. I was expecting it to be to be rubbish, to be honest with you. Uh, and I'm very pleasantly surprised. Uh, maybe the bar being set that low, um, you know, this is, is come in and been pretty damn good. So it's really ex excelled that expectation maybe, I don't know, but it's very impressive. And I think if you have the opportunity to come in, see it in person, loop the dial, handle the watch first, I would take that opportunity because it will just, again, go to show where the value is in a piece like this. Now, obviously, it's no secret. They're obviously playing homage to Richard Mill. And can we blame them? They are sort of the epitome of luxury in today's world. Um, whether you agree with it or disagree with it, it's an iconic design. It's something people really strive for. And again, to have it at an affordable price point, but still very, very interesting with a Turbion, I think is, I, I personally think that is interesting. I know not everyone will, um, but it's not just another homage, right? They've actually gone to the effort of building a skeleton um, Turbion, which is very difficult to do. Um, so for reference, inside here is a Calibre T, uh, ZT01, which is actually a Chinese movement. Um, and Apparently what Zero do is they, they buy all the parts from China, but they build them in Japan and they, they refinish them in Japan. So this movement doesn't actually look like this is standard. They've actually stripped it back more and made it more skeletonized for this watch and they've incorporated it into the shape of this case as well. Uh, obviously Tourneau in design. You have the, uh, very nicely done actually, uh, signed crown right there, or at least logo in the crown, a fitted rubber strap with a deployant right here. Something to keep in mind is these straps are cut uh, to size and we have a brand new uncut orange strap on the way from Zero, which should be with us shortly. So it will be provided with the watch on sale as well. So, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, I won't bore you with the reference to this one. You can see it on the website. Uh, apparently limited to a thousand pieces. I don't know how many they've sold. If they've still got them in stock, you can check that on their websites. But obviously keep in mind any prices you see, you'll probably have to pay customs and duty and all that kind of stuff, which in the UK is not cheap at all. It is a pretty penny. Uh, so do keep that in mind. And this one's from January 2022 with its box and paperwork. And it's worn, but very lightly worn. So they show on wrist and taut dimension. So here we go on my seven inch wrist. I would, it's a bit cold here at the moment. However, if I was a bit warmer, I would say this might be a tad too tight for me personally. Um, so I'd put it at about 6.8, 6.9 inch wrist. This will fit comfortably. So do keep that in mind. But there you go, a sort of Richard Mill for a fraction of the cost, that's for sure. So this is 41.5 mil by 48 mil lug to lug, 13 mil thick and 26 mil on the lugs tapering down to the clasp. And as I say, a new strap is on the way uncut for you guys and girls um, if you purchase this watch. So you can either cut this down further if you've got a smaller wrist, or you can obviously have this strap put away and then cut the new one down to your wrist size. But go check out this watch on the website today. Now let's take a look at one of the latest from Pinion. This is the Pinion Neutron, a fantastic smaller option for those who don't have the larger wrist to support his bigger watches, which still wear relatively well. But this is just a whole nother world in my opinion, and I really, really like it at 38 and a half mil. So let's take a closer look at this one. So Pinion time with the Neutron, and this is the Neutron ST-BL for steel and blue. And as you can see, that blue dial is fantastic. You've got that beautiful um, guilloche in the center. I believe it's Gilliche anyway, it looks like Gilliche, um, with that sort of spiraling pattern, almost like the Seed of Life, um, which is really interesting. Another um, impressive design point. Uh, you've got nice um, numerals around the outside, faux patina, I would call it, on the hands and the indices. Um, just really beautifully done, very simple, but very well executed in traditional pinion fashion. You've got their nice pinion case, uh, crown right here at three o'clock, nicely signed, and a nicely decorated case back as well. And beating away inside here is the automatic ETA 2824-2. And this one's from June 2022 with its box and paperwork, paired on its original nice blue two-stitch strap, which I think complements the watch beautifully. And again, the price point of these is so fantastic, even at retail. Now, you can't actually buy 
this one straight off the shelf. It is a pre-order uh, or made to order, I believe. I could be wrong on that, double check. Um, but again, the price point is fantastic. So as soon as they become pre-owned like this one, which is, by the way, in fantastic condition, barely worn, um, you can get yourself an absolute bargain. So I wouldn't hesitate on this one if you are interested, but let's show it on wrist and taut dimension. And here we go comfortably on my seven inch wrist, as you can see, 38.5 mil by 45 mil lug to lug, 10.5 mil thick and 20 mil on the lug. So endless options for swapping this one out if you are so inclined, but go check it out on the website today. From there, let's go over to the Tank Hoyer. This is the Acuracer Caliber 5, all black. Again, a great looking watch. I've always been a big fan of the Acuracer. I think it's one of the very underrated ranges in Tag Heuer. Um, people usually either go for the F1 at the affordable point or they go for the Carrera and they seem to forget about the Acuracer, which is this perfect um, model in the middle of those two, priced at the middle of those two, but truly in its own league and the, the quality is fantastic, especially at the price point. Um, so, and this is no exception really. So let's take a closer look at this one. So Tag Heuer Acuracer time. Some people really love them. Some people don't. Some people have no idea why they don't love them. Um, there's a lot of hate around the brand still, which is unfortunate because they've come a long way since the 90s and early 2000s when they had a lot of, well not a lot of, but they had a few scandals which definitely put them close to under water um, and obviously the whole tag merger as well really upset certain people because the history of Hoyer is so significant which it is um, but obviously brands to, to me it's like a refinished dial um, this is the way I sort of look at it now the sort of Hoyer before is the pre refinished dial however Hoyer as a brand was pretty much going to go under if it wasn't for Tag. Like they were not doing well um, and we would have lost the brand altogether. So I'm thankful for Tag for, for giving the brand life and allowing it to continue. The same way a refinished style in some cases is almost ne necessary to keep a, light, uh, a watch going and having a life. Whereas sometimes a dial can get so bad that no one wants it at all. And in that point, the watch becomes redundant, which is very, very, you know, it's a, it's a sorry thing to happen. And if we can avoid it, we should. And same with losing brands. If it can be avoided, that's great as long as it's done properly and I agree with that point and unfortunately at the start it wasn't done very well whereas now there is no questioning how great Tag Heuer is as a brand and they sell incredibly well both on a retail front and pre-owned um, that speaks for itself whether the whole collecting community agrees on that point that's a whole nother subject and a whole nother debate but for me I think they're great watches and they offer great value and I'll always be buying Tag when I can so this is a great Acuracer Caliber 5 automatic, all black with the black ceramic bezel, really nice uh, wave, well not wave, but lined dial, date over there, pops of yellow, which really works, and it's paired on its original Tag Heuer canvas strap with the pliant uh, buckle with yellow stitching. Again, as a design goes, this looks fantastic. Beating away inside is the automatic Tag Heuer Caliber 5, usually based on an ETA or a Solita with very slight modifications, and they call it a Caliber 5. And this one is from July 2020 with its box and paperwork, but they're show on wrist and tall dimension. And here we go, paired on my seven inch wrist, a good looking watch. And again, if you like all black watches, this is probably gonna to speak to you very, very well. Uh, whereas if you don't, it's probably not gonna be for you and that's okay. So this is 40 mil by 47 mil look to look, 12 mil thick and 21 mil on the looks. So yeah, a little bit awkward, but there are options. But to be honest, this strap pairing works so well, I, I wouldn't see why you'd swap it out but go check out this one on the website today. From there to another Oris on the table, and this time it is a very, very cool classic world time. Um, and this one does come with its box and booklets, unfortunately no original paperwork, but a really, really cool watch. Another interesting GMT really, uh, to be able to track two time zones. We've got the Bulgari and we've got the Oris, and they both do it in very different ways, which I think is really cool and unique. So let's take a close look at this So one. next up, a really great watch and one for the Oris fanboys out there. This is something you really do not see often. The classic, well time with the secondary time zone over there at three o'clock, a date down there at uh, six o'clock. And again, you have these two pushes, very similar in that regard to the Bulgari, uh, done slightly differently. And this one progresses the hour hand independently forward and backwards, as you can see. And to set the time zone, obviously you'd go around and set it as you wish, and then alter your home time um, as, as you wish. 
as you can see, that time zone is currently two hours ahead. So you can track two time zones. And what's nice about this one compared to a traditional GMT hand is you can actually see the entire time visualized in this way. Some people I know get confused having to try and figure out the 24 hour time zone on a 12 hour watch. I, I get it. For some people, it can be quite confusing. This solves that problem, which I think is very nicely done. Um, so yeah, I really like it. I'm a big fan. The reference to this one is 747, uh, 7494, sorry. And beaten away is the automatic Oris Caliber uh, 690. And this one's from Circa 2010's uh, pre-gold rotor. Uh, sorry, Circa 2000s, pre-gold rotor, very, very cool looking piece, uh, still exhibition case back. It does come with all of its spare links for its original integrated Oris bracelet, and it's just a very good design overall. We've left it unpolished, so if you do want to have it polished, we can do that for you, and additional costs, so just let us know. But let's show on wrist and taut dimensions. And here we go on my 7-inch wrist. As you can see, a very unique design, unique sort of wearing uh, profile as well, which is really interesting. So 37 mil by 46 mil look to look, 11.5 mil thick and 20 mil on the lugs. So you can swap it out nice and easy. It is an integrated design, but it's actually just standard lugs under there. So you can swap it out as you wish, but a great looking watch, one well worth considering if you are looking for a dual time zone or GMT watch. So go check it out on the website today. Now onto a Tissot PRX Midnight Sky as it's called. And this has got a hand painted dial by IFLW. Uh, and this is a limited edition of 100 pieces. We've had a couple of their limited editions over the years, including the G-Shocks and a couple of others. They've always sold very well. People really, really like them. And I can see why, you know, it's an interesting look and it just takes something that's already very great and makes it unique. And I think that's the really interesting part because obviously no two dials are gonna be the same because this is hand splattered. Um, so it's, it's not like a process where it's copied, you know, every single one will be different, which I think is really interesting. So let's take a closer look at this one. So TSO time with the PRX blue dial 41 or 40 mil, sorry, quartz, um, which has been modified by IFLW. You can go see what that stands for on the website. Try not to swear in these videos. <laughs> and this is called the Midnight Sky Limited Edition of 100, where each watch is hand splattered to this unique design. And as I say, each one will be different of the 100, which I think is really cool. Uh, inside is the Quartz ETA caliber F06115, the same movement used in all the watches. This is the same 40 mil quartz PRX in blue uh, as you would get, apart from the modification of the dial, which is really cool. So November 2022 with this box and paperwork. Um, yeah, there's not really an awful lot more to say about it. This is for, for those people who really like this kind of thing, want a PRX, but want something slightly different. And again, you know, th there's a lot of hype around IFL, uh, IFLW. I have to keep reading it out like that. <laughs> um, there's a lot of hype around them and they all seem to do very, very well. We've actually had multiple in the past and have all sold pretty quickly as well. So let's show this one on wrist and taut dimension. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. It's no surprise, it wears very, very well. The, the PRX is just a fantastic watch, done really, really well. So 40 mil, 40 mil uh, case size by 44.5 mil lug to lug, only 10 mil thick and 27 mil at the lugs, tapering down slightly to the clasp. So go check out this watch on the website today. And last but by mo no means least, a very cool Squale. This is the 1545 in gray, which seems to be pretty much sold out everywhere. And again, the price we're asking for this is incredibly fair. It's a very, very well built, built watch with a Solita. Um, and just at the price point, even at retail, I don't think you can go wrong so when they become pre-owned like this it's even better so let's take a closer look at this one so next up is squale and this is the fantastic 1545 gg.ac in this beautiful gray tone with the gray bezel gray dial which is almost a blue to be honest in some lights it's a gray blue and i think it looks fantastic you've got the faux patina on the dial and the hands and then the loom pip as well all looking really really good uh beaten away inside is the automatic salita sw200-1 hidden behind the case back this one does come with his bracelet all spare links box and papers from november 2022 Nice screw down crown. You really can't go wrong with this watch. I call it, personally, I think it's a very affordable Black Bay 58. And I don't mean that in any disrespect. I mean that with actually almost confidence and sort of uh, compliments as well, because the 58 is fantastic. And this to me is the affordable version of it. The case size is really, really good. Yes, it's 14 mil, but it wears incredibly well. 
And to be honest, it, it kind of wears like a Submariner, um, like the, um, the, the not the 41mm, but the 40mm, so the 116610. Um, very, very cool design. And again, you get great looks for very little money, and that's what I love about Squale. So let's show this one on wrist and taut dimensions. And here we go on my 7-inch wrist. Very, very comfortable, very good looking at 40mm by 48mm, look to look only 12mm thick and 20mm lugs. So endless options for swapping this out if you so wish. But go check it out on the website today. So there you have it, guys. Guys and girls, this week's drop, some very interesting watches, a very interesting range. Apologies for, for the noise, but uh, yes, there's something really for everyone here. And let me know down in the comments, what is your favorite watch of this week? I look forward to reading what that is. And we'll see you all again next week, again for another great drop, which is pretty majority full. We've got some very interesting pre-owned fears, a lot of Seikos. Um, there really is something for everyone. And again, price point is really varied. Um, so I think you guys and girls are going to really, really like next week as well. So we'll see you all again then. Take care.